Hello, this is Edward Lambert, Effective Demand Research. This is going to be a video about the Fisher effect using system dynamics. So what you see before you is a program that I did in uh, Bensum. You can get it online for free and the, uh, the program will actually allow you to program uh, system dynamics, models of system dynamics. And system dynamics is basically where you have all the variables interacting with one another and then you run it through a time simulation to find out how the variables react. And you can see the charts here that I have to the right and these charts will show you how the model reacts, how the different variables in the model will react through a time simulation. Okay, so I want to use system dynamics to show the Fisher effect on the inflation rate. So why? Why am I doing this? Well, the inflation rate recently has been going lower and people are puzzled. Why is it going lower? Is it the Fisher effect? Well, no, it can't be the Fisher effect. That's crazy. Well, let's look at a model that actually explains some of the dynamics behind the Fisher effect. And I'm going to use system dynamics to show this. So let's start, I'm going to start describing the model. Right here in the center is the inflation rate. This is the hub of the model. To one side you have this purple square and to the other side you have this green square. Now the inflation rate is affected by this Fed pulse. So whenever the Fed wants to be proactive against the inflation rate, they change the Fed rate. I'm just going to stick to the Fed rate in this simplified model. And this Fed pulse is the Fed reacting to the inflation rate and then the inflation rate, rate will react to the Fed pulse, which is a, a Fed action. And then on the other side in this green box will be the Fisher effect. And the Fisher effect is another effect upon the inflation rate over time, which has a different effect. But the inflation rate, according to the system dynamics model, is going to be affected by the Fed pulse and the Fisher rate. The Fisher effect, I mean, sorry. Okay, so let me describe what's in this purple box on the left. How do you get to this Fed pulse? Well, you have to back out to this Fed rate change. And this is how the Fed is going to be changing the Fed rate. Now, there are different variables that determine how the Fed rate will change. You have, just follow the arrows, you've got the inflation rate matched up against the inflation target. That's one comparison to, what, to, to know whether you're going to raise or lower the Fed rate. And then you have the Fed rate itself coming in here, which tells you something about the Fed rate, what you need to do with it. So there's an equation behind this Fed rate change here. And then this length of Fed pulse is very important. Usually the Fed is always proactive. They just keep pulsing every three, every month, six months, whatever. They can change the Fed rate. So usually this, the Fed pulse is, is the Fed always changing the Fed rate. But we've seen lately that for a couple of years, the Fed has not been able to change the Fed rate at all. It's just sitting at the lower bound. So you can take out this Fed pulse from the equation. And what I'm going to do in the simulation is just pulse it for two or three quarters at the very beginning and then stop it and watch what happens. Because that's basically what happened is that the Fed put it at the zero lower bound and then the Fed rate got stuck there and w was no longer able to be pulsing against inflation. So, and then you come up here and you got the Fed, as the Fed rate changes, it will actually change the Fed rate. And if you come over here to this bottom right corner, this graph will actually show you what happens to the Fed rate during the simulation. You'll see that it'll drop below 1% and at about a half of half a percent, it'll just stay there throughout the, this particular sim simulation. The thing about this, this uh, program is that you have all these dials and knobs and bells and whistles. So if you want to change one of the variables, you can see how it affects the whole system. And I'll show a few, a bit of that now, but I'm not going to go into it very deeply because there's so much I could talk about this. This could easily be a one hour video and I'm going to try and keep it much shorter than that. Okay, so that, that's the Fed Pulse. 
the, I mean the Fed rate change comes here and goes into the Fed pulse and then you have this Fed rate pulse delay and this Fed dampening which are two factors, two variables, which will control how that Fed pulse affects inflation. So even though you might have one quarter where the Fed changes the Fed rate and then it impacts the inflation rate, you might have a lasting effect. So you can actually delay that pulse through time. So if you come up here to the right, upper right corner, you'll see this blue line, which is the, the Fed pulse. You'll see that the Fed will drop there in the simulation, the Fed, the Fed rate drops. See how the Fed rate drops down here in the bottom right corner? It drops by more than 1%, from 2% down below 1%. But the Fed pulse itself only goes down a little over a half a percent. And then from there, it slowly begins to decay out to, say, 8, 12 quarters. And uh, that a function of this Fed rate pulse delay and the Fed dampening which controls the effect of the Fed pulse on inflation over time. Okay, so now we go into the green box and look at the Fisher effect. Now the Fisher effect is, is basically going to say that you have this long run Fisher effect projected Fed rate which is if you look into the future you have this stable steady state Fed rate that's projected. And then that's compared to a, a long run Fisher effect natural real rate. I, I put in that long run Fisher effect just to show that this belongs to the steady state equilibrium of the Fisher effect. And then the Fed rate, this, this LRFE projected Fed rate, subtracts out the natural real rate and you get this long-run Fisher effect inflation target which is basically the difference between the, the, the projected Fed rate at steady state and the natural real rate at steady state and you get this inflation target at steady state. Now this long-run Fisher effect inflation target can be different than the actual Fed inflation target. I don't think I'm going to be getting into that in this video but it's really interesting when that long-run Fisher effect inflation target is different, whether it's less or more than the actual inflation target, you get a, you get a distortion in Fed policy and monetary policy. But I think I'm going to leave that for another video um, and, keep, and keep moving on this one. And then the same thing with the Fisher effect, you'll have this time delay and this damping to control how the Fisher effect actually adjusts or actually changes the inflation rate over time. Okay, so so I'm going to now show how this how this simulation runs. I'm going to push a button here and you'll see all these different dials and knobs under each of these variables. So for one thing, let's say that the Fed rate pulse delay here is about three quarters. Start over here. The Fed rate pulse delay, give it about three quarters. The Fisher time delay, give it about five quarters. So the Fisher time delay is a little slower. And then the damping, let's go down to the damping. The damping on the Fed pulse is going to be 0.4. The damping on the Fisher effect is going to be 1. Those are like coefficients just to kind of slow it down. To give you an idea about the Fed damping, I'm going to just take this Fed damping number and take it down to zero. Now what that does is that completely shuts off the Fed pulse. Even if the Fed wanted to at this point, the Fed damping is saying, nope, there's nothing you can do. Now if you come down here, see how the, fl the inflation rate starts out, come up here, kind of follow me around a little bit here, the initial inflation rate is 0.6%. 0.006, 0.6%. And then from there, following the Fisher effect, it will slowly go to this long run Fisher effect inflation target right there. So if you take off, if you take out the Fed pulse, the inflation would just tend to go to this long run inflation target. So, but we don't do that. So I'm going to take 
and uh, restore that fed, fed damping number to its 0.4. Now the same thing I could do over here with the fissure damping. I could just take this all the way down to zero and shut down the fissure effect. Completely say, okay, that doesn't exist. I'm just going to say that the fed pulse, which in this case is pulsing, come up here to the right, upper right, you'll see that the fed rate is pulsing and then it has this decay, but the red line of the fissure effect has gone to zero. So it's not, a, it's not inf affecting or impacting the inflation rate at all. And you'll see here that the inflation rate at that point in time will just simply rise and keep rising to around 3% according to this model. So it, it does have a certain equilibrium, but you'll see that it's interesting is because that equilibrium that it would head for is beyond the inflation target of 2%, which would be right here. So if you just shut down the, the, the fissure damping, just the fissure effect, just shut it off, and then pulse the Fed rate for two, two or three quarters here at the beginning, you'll see that the inflation would just rise and head, head towards an equilibrium. Which will bring me back to, let me, let me restore the fissure damping, okay. Over here to the, this length of the Fed rate pulse. Right now it's pulsing for the first three quarters. You see that three down there. I can extend that all the way out to 24 quarters. So the Fed policy is able to respond and does respond as well as it can upon the uh, zero lower bound for six years doing whatever it can within this model. And you'll see over here that the Fed rate does drop, but then at a certain time, let's say this, in this graph, zero corresponds to 2010, first quarter 2010. Four, first quarter 2011. So according to this model, if the Fed just stayed proactive upon inflation, they would have started to raise the Fed rate in about 2011, 2012, thereabouts. And then it would have come back down and hit the zero lower bound anyway, eventually, if they, if they just tried to stay proactive on it the whole time. This, that's kind of what Europe did. Around 2011, 2012, Europe tried to start raising the Fed rate. They kind of followed the same model, and then they, they quickly backed off and brought it back down to the zero lower bound. You'll see that down here in this, this Fed rate. This kind of follows the uh, ECB, European Central Bank, pathway of the inflation, of, uh, I mean of their uh, central bank rate down here. That's they, they were trying to stay proactive. But I'm going to reset the length back down to three quarters to simulate what's happening in the United States. Now what you'll see down here in this inflation watch graph is that the blue line is the actual path of inflation. The green line behind it is actual data from the United States from two, first quarter 2010 up and through to about 12 or 13 or 14, which is, is about the first quarter 2014. And then from after first quarter 2014, the computer just keeps that last piece of data constant until the end, 24 quarters. So you can see that the simulation of the system dynamics shows exactly what's been happening with the inflation rate ever since the, the Fed rate got stuck at the zero lower bound and was trapped and couldn't move. It began, the Fed rate lost its ability to pulse against the inflation rate, lost its ability to be active against it. So in physical terms, it became passive. And as it became passive, the Fisher effect came into play because the, the, you would no longer have a, a change in the Fed rate. So the Fisher effect then had the whole game. Whatever the Fisher effect wanted to do would do it. So you'll see that this is how the, uh, the simulation here follows exactly the path, almost exactly a path, very close, of the uh, in inflation path since 2010. Okay, so with that, I'm just going to call this video done.